welcome to Beer, Wine, Spirits. Today, we're down here at Boston Bistro's Beer Garden, but we're gonna go down and get some food at the Caroline Brewery. Caroline Brewery, uh, the Brewster. The Brewster. The Brewster, Tony the, the Brewster. Brewster. What a great menu they have. It takes you back in time in the German era. It is. It's, it's very, very good food. We didn't try the strudel or the, or the, 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 uh, we couldn't get past the great food. We never got that far. There was sausages and there was cheese and the little crackers. Oh, and don't forget the mustards and the horse. Oh yeah, I know, I know. The sauces so were you guys all are made in-house. It is. Yes, very, very good. You're gonna see all that. Me and Dave's gonna try a little bit of the beet wine too, which I thought, or the beet beer. Beet beer. It tastes like wine though. It's so good. And the butter they make is ah, real, you know, real. I'm gonna butter. tell you what. This is this is honest. You have got to try the butter. The butter and the and the bread they make is crazy good. So. All from the spent grain. Yeah. Everything oh, is yeah, utilized. Yeah. yeah. Everything is recycled in. And that's so cool. It's very so, cool. So me and Dave, we're gonna go down there and try some, and you, stay tuned for more, beer, wine, spirits. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome to beer, wine, and spirits. Today, as you can see, we're not down at Dave's. We're at Carolina Historical Park. Caroline Brewery. Dave, who is on the show today? This is Tony Brown. She is the historical Brewster. Thank you. Historical Brewster. Yes. What does that mean? <laughs> well, it means I brew beer. Right. But I brew beer in a historical way, right. which makes sense for Caroline Historical Park. Right. And Brewster just simply means I'm a female brewer rather than a man. Uh, it's not a brewer. Yes. Just, just a slight, yeah. Really? See, my, 
my taste buds are probably burned out way past tasting that little bit. But it's very faint, and that's mm. what you want. It is. You don't want to necessarily recognize it unless you've been told that's what's in it, and it's very refreshing. Very crisp. Very refreshing. It's very refreshing. It's a very refreshing beer. Now, when we came back and filmed you earlier, what were you making that day? She would not even use a match to start the fire. No. True historian. True historian. Everything to the T. And that's to the tea. her job in this facility nationally will be recognized for exactly oh, yeah. those small details yeah. because that's what was going to set this event or this location from anybody else in the world. I have told that story to a half a dozen people. And everybody I've told to, it was impressed. Oh my God! All right. Well, if you're gonna open up a brewery at a historical park, you need to pay attention not just to the beer, but also more importantly the history. So that's that's a big part of what we're doing is telling a story not just in the process of how we brew the beer, but also in the unique styles of recipes that, that we're serving. With folks. So is that something? If I went back in time and I I popped up around here, is this something I would drink around here? Yes, I believe so. See, I think that's the that's what I love the most. But that is the taste that you would have tasted right here in the Miami Valley, what, 150, 200 years ago? Well, with all the breweries that Dayton had, probably more than many in one concentrated oh, yeah. area, Dayton had so much talent doing everything so many different ways because of the origins of the world that they came from. Yeah, right. it, was, it was a little micro, micro melting pot. Yes, it was. A smaller version of, of Cleveland, Cincinnati, yeah. uh, a little bit of Chicago, and a little bit of yeah. New York. C Cincinnati, I think, is one, of the, is one of the next places that we, we're going to be taking the show. Okay. Uh, yeah, so what's next? Next is a porter. This uh, is I love an early porter, yeah. very, very thin on the mouthfeel compared to a modern porter. Right. Again, the sour note is going to come through.
think that that's bitter, but it's not. Mm -hmm. You're going to be drinking a loaf of bread? No, it's not my thing. Yeah. You have to get a master lips. And yeah. Knowing that some people have another preconceived notion that, they're going to, that they want a beer to be a certain way. And what she's doing is teaching them that whatever they think is the norm today was never the norm of the old. Because even back then, they were very creative. They were changing. They were being very That's experimental. And, and experimental. Yes. With what was available at the time, and then for the personal preference and taste profiles that they wanted in the future. Right. Everybody was always experimenting. Now, is this made of the locally sourced stuff? It is during the hop harvest season. There's always a sourness 
that comes from carbonation. Not always tartness and, and not uh, dryness, it's sourness. But CO2 sourness is different than the sourness that comes from the fruity esters. So once you taste a cask that has not been carbonated and that is maybe at the right time of pouring because you know when that spile starts to talk to you, you right. know you've got a little bit too much in there. So is there a is there a prime time on a cask? Is it like is it best at some point and then go down and milk from there? Sure. For us, no, because we we want to have that range of experience each time you come in and you're trying it. Right. Um, because there was incredible variability in, in batches, it's, whether your wife was making it or a commercial brewer. Well, we all know you, you swivel around the right. last little bit in the bottom, yeah. Yep. Um, but for a true cask experience, right. to get that nice balance of the carbonation, but also that, that advantage of the
meats, your sausages are local. Where are they coming from? They are not. This is out of a sausage house in Wisconsin. Okay. We sampled quite a few and they were the ones that we felt most represented, not just the historical recipe, um, but also the German influence that of course Dean had. Um, we have four different verse. Um, three are represented here. We have a traditional metwurst, bratwurst, frank, and a hot link. So we have the hot link, the brat, and the metwurst for us today. I love meat. So if you want to go a little Hungarian, I make this wonderful Hungarian coal boss. I'll bring some down to you. Yes. Just it's for your good. All right. It's good. Okay, so let's find out. And then the beets, as I mentioned, are our house pickled beets. So more often than not, when you come in and you see a kettle hanging over our first floor fireplace, the kettle is going to have beets in it that we're boiling away either for this purpose or for our fresh boiled beet salad. Let's do ladies first, and what are we no, doing? She, 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 So 
what's the website? Your website is carolinebrewingco.org. That will get you anything that you need to know about the history of Dickens Brewing, but also what it takes to plan your visit to come out and see us. And then, of course, there's always DaytonHistory.org that rounds out the rest of all the park experiences. You have to come in, run the brewing, run the doing some of the processing. The smells are wonderful. Oh, I so we encourage everybody to find out when you're brewing, come in and look at the see what you want to do the of the brewing process, to understand where this important nutritional beverage, why it was so important for them to dock where they dock in the United States. All that information on the website. Yes. And when you're in here, just like Dave says, find out, ask your servers. Uh, ben would have been happy to tell you the same.